Okay, sorry if I sound a bit rushed with this video. I should be studying for finals, but instead I'm making a Minecraft video because everyone knows I have my priorities straight. But it's okay, it will all work out in the end. Probably. Look, finals really aren't a big deal for me right now, I don't care. Before I get into the video, which, as you guessed from the title, is going to be about plate boundaries, I do want to apologize for an error I made in my last video. My last video was about fault, and I accidentally said transform fault. That's wrong. It's not a transform fault. It's called a strike slip fault. There are transform boundaries, which I'm going to talk about in a few seconds. But again, sorry for that. That's on me. And now, onto the video. First, a one minute recap. You should probably already know this stuff, but just in case, I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and assume that you don't. You ready, bunny? Let's go. We are on Earth. Earth is like an onion. It has layers. There's the inner core, which is solid. The outer core, which is liquid. The mantle, which is above that. It is not a liquid. It's not magma, unlike diagrams seem to suggest. It's actually a ductile solid, which means it's solid rock that behaves like a liquid. Crazy, I know. And then on top of all of that, very, very, very top, we have the crust. And that's where we are. That's the important bit. Now, the crust can also be divided into a few layers. You have the lithosphere, the very top of the crust, and the asthenosphere, which actually includes the upper mantle. The crust isn't just one big slab, though. It's broken into several large tectonic plates. There's seven major ones and several other minor ones. And these plates float on the mantle, which, as I said earlier, is a ductile solid. And since the crust is less dense than the mantle, it naturally floats on top. That's just how solids behave in liquid. If you're in water, and if you're less dense than the water, you're going to float. That's how it goes. And floating things rarely are stationary, so there's going to be movement, and that's what we're going to be discussing today, the tectonic plate movements, and to be more specific, their boundaries. First up, you have the divergent plate boundary. This is where plate A and plate B are separating, and the point of separation at the edge of their crust is what makes up the divergent plate boundary. Plate A is going left, plate B going right, then you have this little bit in the middle. There's two ways to remember the name. You can either think of the, like, the divergent, you know, that means to separate, or you can think of it like this. When you die, you're separating from everything in this life, okay? So it's gone forever. A divergent separates from each other, just like dying separates you from everything you've ever loved and ever cared about. Next up, you have a convergent plate boundary, and as the name implies, this is when two plates converge with each other, meaning coming together. So plate A, coming to the right, play B going to the left, they collide in the center. Then you have a process called subduction, which means one of the plates will get sucked underneath the other and descend back down into the mantle to be recycled. This plate boundary also forms magma and is also notorious for having volcanoes at it. And then we have the final plate boundary. So plate A is there, plate B is here, but instead of pulling away from each other or pushing against, they're just sort of chilling next to each other. However, they're still moving. Remember, they're still floating on the mantle. So one of them is going to be drifting maybe that way, and the other this way. Since their edges are still touching, they're going to scrape against each other. Now, it isn't always the case that they're going in opposite directions. Sometimes they'll both, let's say they're both going this way. However, this plate will be moving slightly faster than this one, which means this one will inevitably drag, causing earthquakes, which everyone loves those things. Now, if you watched my previous video, you're probably confused. And I don't blame you, because at first glance, you may think, well, the stuff I'm talking about in this video and the stuff I talked about in my last video, I mean, aren't they identical? Well, the answer to that is no, but also yes, in a way, sort of. It's like a mixture, okay? Think of it like this, or these concepts are very, very closely related, and that's because you cannot have a plate boundary without faults also being there. If there's a boundary, there's 100% going to be a fault associated with it. That's just how it works. And if you look closer at my examples here, you're going to start to notice something here. Look at this. You see what this looks like? You see how there's one going up just from it moving away? This one's going to inevitably slide down. Does that remind you of something? Well, if you didn't watch my last video, probably not. And to that, shame on you. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. But if you do remember, you're probably going to think, well, look at that. It's a normal fault. A normal fault occurs when the foot wall, the one you can walk down, remember, goes up relative to the hanging wall which is this one. Remember, the foot wall is the one with a smaller angle at the bottom. So if you imagine I just took a cut right there, you don't see the mantle below it. You can see, smaller angle, that's a larger angle. And the reason there's a fault here is because of this magma. Because if it just pulled straight apart, there wouldn't, there'd just be a gap in the middle. But the magma is what allows a normal fault to appear here. Then for the convergent, do you see anything here that's similar? Hmm? Study it. Absorb it into your brain. Internalize it. Let it become part of your soul. Because yes, a convergent plate boundary has a reverse fault. A reverse fault occurs whenever the foot wall goes down compared to the hanging wall. The hanging wall moves up over it. And then finally, I mean, this one looks identical to my example almost. This is also the fault that I said incorrectly in my last video. This is a transform plate boundary. And at transform plate boundaries, you're going to find 
strike slip fault, not transform fault. That's not the correct wording. It's a strike slip fault. Because the concepts are so similar, I can understand why it's easy to mix them up because, you know, I did that literally in that last video. But the way I remember them is imagining them like this. It's the fault fault that the boundaries can move, okay? The boundary encompasses this entire area, but the fault is this right here. It's almost like a broken bone, okay? Imagine I take your arm and I break it. That break is going to be the fault, and then the area around the break is going to be the boundary. Let's also pretend you're very merciful and you forgive me, and you also don't mind the excruciating pain you're now in. There you have it, a rundown of probably the first thing you ever learned in a geology class. But I don't care. And besides, I have one more quick example before I end the video. Okay, see these two slabs right here? I want to discuss how they are interesting. Other than just being suspended over the water, which if you saw that in real life, you'd probably have a heart attack. And no, they're not just interesting because they're a curve, although curves are very nice. They're aesthetically pleasing to look at. But we're gonna pretend that this is right here is if you were standing over a divergent plate boundary. As I said earlier, divergent means where plate A, this side, is gonna be moving that way, and plate B is gonna be moving that way. They're pulling apart at this seam, okay? However, this neat curve right here, that's not gonna happen in nature because we're dealing with rocks. Let me ask you something. Have you ever broken a rock and it just cleanly pulls apart into a nice seam? No cracking, no fracture, doesn't look like an egg. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's impossible unless you take a sawzall to it. And as you can imagine, plates slowly drifting apart do not act like a sawzall. Instead, you're gonna see something like this. Now, if you don't know what you're looking at, that's okay. I didn't know either when I first saw it, but these straight lines, they're perfectly perpendicular with the direction of the movement. I say perfectly very roughly, but they're straight. So this plate B moving that way, plate A moving that way, and then you have these periods. This period is a divergent plate boundary, but this part is where it gets interesting because think about it. This one's moving there, that one's moving there, but this area, this area of the plate, it's not pulling apart. It's just scraping against each other. I'm gonna line it up properly so you can have a hint. And if they're scraping against each other, then obviously it's not a divergent plate boundary. Instead, at these points, you're going to have a transform plate boundary. That wraps up more simple geology in Minecraft. This video is absolutely garbage to plan out. Like, I had such a hard time for no reason. These concepts are so simple. But the thing is, that's the problem. They're simple. I learned a lot more about these things in my geology class. But I really couldn't include them because each thing deserved at least, at least five minutes of talk time. And I did not want to make a two hour long video because one, no one would watch it. I wouldn't even watch it. I probably wouldn't even edit it if I'm being honest. And two, the YouTube algorithm would be like, bonk, no. My next video is probably not going to be geology related. I know, it's a travesty. Burn me at the stake, I don't care. It's probably just going to be a streaming highlight, which by the way, self-advertising, let's go. Oh, it doesn't, there we go, let's go. I stream on Twitch. Please go follow me there. And subscribe here, by the way. If you haven't done that already, I'm disappointed with you. I give you essential knowledge and you don't even pay me back. Shame. 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 Nah, I don't care. Goodbye.